Hello and welcome. In this video we are going to integrate Entity Framework Core with a Hot Chocolate GraphQL API. You'll notice over here on the left hand side that I've created a basic GraphQL API. We have a book service which contains a collection of books. We have a mutation class that contains an add book mutation to add a book to the collection of books. We have a query class that contains a books query in order to return the collection of books from the book service. And within the program startup, we are registering that book service as a singleton and setting it up with our GraphQL server alongside our mutation type and query type. What we're going to do in this video is convert the book services in memory collection of books to use a database context, storing the books in a PostgreSQL database. So what we are going to do is make sure that we have the required NuGet packages. As you can see, I have two hot chocolate packages, one ASP.NET Core and one data.entity framework. Important to note that these should both be the same uh, version. In this case, at the time of recording, that is version 13.0.5 and as I say it's important that any hot chocolate packages are all the same version. We've then got our entity framework core design package which contains the design time tools for the entity framework core CLI and last but not least we have our PostgreSQL entity framework core package to integrate entity framework core with PostgreSQL. For the purposes of this sample, I'll be using Postgres, but feel free to use your preferred database provider of choice. So now that we've confirmed that we have the required packages installed in our project, we are going to create our DB context. So first of all, I'm going to remove the book service because we're going to replace this with our DB context. I'll also comment out our mutations and queries, like so. And I'll remove references to the book service from the startup. So now we can crack on with creating our application DB context. So you see there we have our DB context class. I'm going to generate a constructor with the typed DB context options parameter, like so. And now what I am going to do is create an author entity and a book entity, like so. You can see here that we have our author class and our book class. The author contains an ID and a name, and also the navigation property for the collection of books that that author has authored. We then have our book class, which contains ID, title, and also author ID alongside the navigation property back to the author who authored that book. Last but not least, back in our DB context class, I'm going to create a DB set for both authors and books. So we do the author one like so. And then we do the exact same thing for books with a set of type book like so. And that's our DB context class and the author and book entities created. And now what we're going to do is set up that DB context in the startup. So what I'm going to do is say builder.services.addb context. And this is going to be type DB application DB context. We use the action that provides us with a service provider and a DB context options builder, like so. Just rename those two parameters to make them clear and avoid any conflicts. And then we're going to want to get the configuration from the service provider by saying service provider dot get required service of type I configuration. And then we can say DB context options builder dot use NPG SQL. And then we we'll say configuration dot get connection string. And I'm going to call the connection string default 
connection like so. Now what we're going to do is make sure that we have that connection string in our app settings. So if we flick into our app settings, .development.json, you can see I have a connection string called default connection. And this is the connection string to my local host Postgres SQL database. Again, if you're using an alternative database provider, then you just need to make sure that you have the correct connection string there as the default connection. Next up, what we are going to do now is generate a migration for the database. So what we will do is we will seed in into the API project inside our terminal. And then we will run the command .NET EF migrations add. And I'm going to call it initial create like so. Give that a few moments to build the project. And you can see that we now have our migrations folder. I'll right click that and add it into version control. And if we just take a look inside, we can confirm we have an authors table and a books table. And the books table has a foreign key constraint on the author ID column, pointing back to the ID of the authors table. So that is our migration created and our application DB context configured in startup. Last but not least, I'm going to write a little bit of code at runtime to migrate the database. So just above app.run, I'm going to say if app.environment is development, i.e. if the application is running in the development environment, then using var scope equals app.services.createScope. And then I'm going to say await scope.serviceProvider.getRequiredService application db context dot database dot migrate async and that means that when the application uh, starts up if it's currently running in the development environment when it starts up then it will migrate the database for us and update it with any pending migrations that need to be applied last but not least whilst we're in here we can register the db context with our graphql server so where we do builder.services.addGraphQLServer, at the end of that, we can say register DB context type application DB context. Much like the same way that we registered our book service previously, we do the same thing, but with our DB context in order to register our DB context with the hot chocolate GraphQL server. So now what we are going to do is we're going to update our queries and mutations. So inside our query class, we have our get books a query. We're going to convert the return type from an enumerable to a queryable, and we're going to replace the book service with our application DB context. And what we're going to do is also create an identical query, but this time, we're going to get authors rather than books. And this will return an iQueryable of type author. So now we have two queries, one to return the authors from the authors table, and one to return the books from the books table. Last but not least, we can come into our mutation class and update the mutations. So what we're going to want to do is replace the book service with our application db context. The string title can remain the same, but we are going to want to replace the string author with a GUID, and we're going to say author ID. And that will be the ID of the author instead of the author's name. So what we're then going to want to do is we're going to say var author equals await context dot authors dot find async and we're going to specify the author id we're also going to convert the method to make it asynchronous rather than synchronous and what we can then do is we can do a simple if uh, check here to check that the author is null and if they are null then we can throw a new argument exception and we can say failed to find the author 
and then we can specify the author ID. And then we we'll specify name of author ID as the parameter. And then what we can do beneath the if statement is we can say var book equals new book. We're going to say guid.newguid as the ID. Then we'll pass in the title and the author ID. And we will also specify the author equals the author that we have found from the database, like so. Then what we're going to do is say await context.books dot add async passing in the book and then we can say await context dot save changes async in order to add the book into the database and save those changes to the database and then we can keep the return book at the bottom there and much like we did in the query class we're going to create another mutation to create an author so what I'm going to do is create a method called add author. This is going to have the DB context injected into it. It's also going to have the name of the author, like so. And then we can say var author equals new author. We say guid.newguid for the ID. And then we pass in the name as the second parameter. We then say await context.authors.addAsync, passing in the author, and then await context.savechangesAsync, and then we can return that author as the result of the mutation in the payload that's returned back to the caller. So that is our add author and add book mutations, and also authors and books queries all set up. And now what we can do is run the GraphQL API and have a play around with it in Banana Cake Pop. And so what we can do is we can run our GraphQL API. It will build the solution. And as we can see there, it has automatically migrated the database for us at runtime, thanks to that uh, code that we added into the startup. And if we now open up the browser, and navigate to slash GraphQL to open the banana cake pop editor. If we then create a document, apply the defaults, and we can now interact with our mutations and queries. So the first thing that we are going to want to do is add an author. So we're going to specify a mutation of add author, which will return us the ID and name of the author. We're also going to provide input, like so. We're going to name the mutation add author, specify the input. This is going to be of type add author input. And what we're then going to do down here in our variables is we are going to create an input for the author. We give it a name there of John Skeet. And what we can do now if we hit run is run that mutation and you can see that has now created an author in the database with a GUID as the ID. If we jump back to the IDE and if we open up the database and if we give this a refresh you can see that we have our three tables and if we open up the authors table you can see there that we have an author in the database. So what we do now if we jump back to Banana Cake Pop is we're going to make a note of the ID of the author. And what we're going to do is change this mutation to add book. So this is now going to be an add book input. And we're going to replace add author with add book. This is going to return us the book and we're going to specify the ID and name, the ID and title, sorry, of the book. And we'll also specify the ID and name of the author. We will provide the input like so. And then if we come down to our variables, we can remove the name and we can give the title of the book as C sharp in depth. And then the author ID is going to be the ID of John Skeet, who we just created. 
And if we now run that, you can see that it's now created a book called C Sharp In Depth with a new GUID as the ID. And you can see that it's assigned John Skeet as the author of that book. So if we now jump back into our IDE, and if we open up the books table, you can see that we now have a book called C Sharp In Depth. And you can see that we have the foreign key author ID, which relates to the author John Skeet, who we created previously. So essentially what we have done in this video is we have converted a book service which just contains an in-memory collection of books to use a PostgreSQL database with an authors table and a books table. We've then added that DB context to our startup and registered it with the GraphQL server. And then we've adapted our queries and mutations to use the application DB context instead of the book service. And using banana cake pop, we've then ran a mutation to add an author and then run another mutation to add a book using that created author. So this video has shown you how you can wire up Entity Framework Core and integrate it with Hot Chocolate. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.